Hi, my name is Mike Fulsame. I am the CEO and co-founder of Groove Digital. And today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the Groove Pages app and show you how to build a page or a website very quickly with Groove Pages. The first thing you'll notice when you log in is a list of the current websites that you have here. I just have one right now. Over here is where you'll be able to click to go through our different apps. Right now, it's just Groove Pages and Groove Cell. I'm going to close that. In the top right is where you'll find things about your account. And this burger menu will have more information once you're actually in a site that's related to the website or the page. Furthermore, when you have a lot of websites, it will be easier to find your sites using the advanced filter here. You could search by pages, uh, the name, the creation date, the last date that it was uploaded. Uh, and any particular name information that you put here uh, in the search field. But let's jump right in and let's start building a website. Okay, so I'm gonna click new site and I want you to take a look right here because I wanna describe what's gonna be here in the future. Of course, you can always build a blank template from scratch and that's what we're gonna be doing today. But I want you to picture here where you're gonna see a couple of different tabs. One is gonna say pages, Another one is going to say websites and another one will say funnels. So if you're looking to build funnels, you'll click on a tab here that would say funnels and you'll get all different types of funnels like webinar funnels, product launch funnels, book funnels, tripwire funnels, landing page funnels and list building funnels and things like that. So that would be funnels. So you can imagine things like health and wellness or real estate or different types of niche websites that are fully built out, sort of like you remember back in the days of WordPress when you had about us page, contact page, media, home pages, different things like that. Then over here, like I said, there'll be a tab that says pages and that's like if you're looking for your one pages, things like a 404 page or a one page event page or something like that. But let's jump right in, click on blank template and let's start building a site from scratch. And we're gonna show you how easy this is. Okay, and as you can see, it's a little bit empty here. This is our palette, as you can see what our website is gonna look like. And we haven't put anything on there just yet, but I just wanna walk you around the interface right here. Up to the top left, this shows you what page you're in, you're in your home page, and I'm gonna show you how you add pages in just a minute. Uh, we have something called expert mode, uh, which I'm leaving on, and I'll explain that when our palette shows up with our style editor and our functionality. This right here is a preview of how your site's gonna look like on a desktop a laptop, an iPad, or a mobile phone. I'll show that later when we actually have a website here. These features I'll go over while we're building our website. This is where you'll find information to publish your website. And finally is this menu right here. And the one thing I wanna go over right now, we can come back to some of these things later, is your site settings. This is where you're gonna to wanna to start first. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to name our site. And for right now, I'm just going to call this my demo site. The next thing you're going to want to do is load up a favicon. That is what shows up in your browser tab. That looks something like this, where you see these little icons that represent your brand here in the browser. And you would just have your designer make you a favicon. It's usually a square or a round image. And once that's on your hard drive, you would just come here and click browse and find it on your hard drive and load it up. Next here is code that you would want on every single page of your website. Usually that's things like Google Analytics and Facebook code. And usually they will tell you to put some code in the header or in the body at the top of the body or the footer of the body. Now the next one is something called the open graph. I know a lot of people don't use this because they're not familiar with it, but I'm going to give you an example. This is something that you want when somebody drops in a link of your website on Facebook, on Twitter, in a text message or a chat or WhatsApp or iMessage or Skype or anything like that. And if you've noticed when you drop a link in one of those softwares, uh, like Facebook or Skype or something, it usually turns that link into what's known as rich text. And then what it does is it pulls an image from your website and then it gives a description. Now, if you don't put any information here, what's gonna happen is it's just gonna pull the first image off your site and blow it up and that might be your logo. And that's why it's gonna look pixelated or it just might grab any image that isn't the one that you necessarily want representing your brand. And it's gonna pull the first bit of text off your website and use that as the preview. And you really don't wanna do that. You wanna have something looking very good that if it's dropped in to Facebook or Twitter or Skype, that it's almost like an advertisement or a billboard for your site. So let me give you an example of how that works. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a website called Canva, right? So I just typed in Canva and you'll notice right here 
that it's pretty much just a login page with this image right here and it says design anything publish anywhere so if we put that into facebook you would think that it would probably say something like design anywhere publish anywhere and load this image here so let's find out so let's go to facebook and let's type in that url and see what happens when we type in this link here and we hit return well we'll notice they have a different logo here uh, their brand here it says empowering the world to design and then it says some text that you didn't see on the website create beautiful designs with your team use canvas drag and drop feature etc so this is how you can control what happens when somebody puts in a link now i'm going to give you a little tip the reason why i use canva is because they're a great design tool so let's head on over to canva and let's actually see which <clears throat> Okay, so now I'm here at Canva. I'm logged in. You can have a free account or a paid account. And what I would recommend is you just click on the YouTube thumbnail like this, and then you can choose one of their templates over here, and then you can just you know put your images in and type in your text or you know anything that you want here. They have uh, different free and paid versions of these thumbnails, and uh, I use many of these all the time. You can replace these images and the text, anything you want. When you're done, you would just click download. Uh, the image and then it would download to your right down to your hard drive and then when you're done you would come over to here in Groove Apps and you would load that image right up into your library something just like this here and that goes to our downloads I would take that design and I would load it up into my library just like that hit upload and just like that, we have that image loaded in for our social graph. And then over here, I would put a title, whatever I would want for my website. And now we've just set up our rich text. Now, one more thing before we get started, you may notice that I'm using Chrome and we recommend using Chrome for Groove Pages. We don't recommend using things like Safari, Internet Explorer, or Firefox. So again, using Chrome will give you the best results. But remember, Chrome, a lot of users have a lot of extensions. And sometimes these extensions can corrupt software apps that are working online. So we have found many times that there is not a problem with the app, it's a problem with the extension that is going on here. So what I recommend you do is you go to the Chrome Web Store and look up this extension called Disable Extensions Temporarily. I have it installed. You would just click install. And what that would do is it would look like this little power button right here. And just like this, I just click that and all of my Chrome extensions just went off and I'll have absolutely nothing that's working within the website trying to conflict with the builder. When I'm done, I simply click turn back on and then I just drag this here like that and you'll see all my extensions are back. But for here, I'm going to shut them off so that I get a better experience. Okay, enough of that. Let's get to the exciting stuff. Let's build a web page. And as you can see here, it looks a bit empty. Okay, let's jump in and now let's build an actual page. In fact, an entire website. And this is gonna get exciting. So the first thing we wanna go over here is our blocks, elements, pages, and pop-ups. So let's talk about blocks. The first thing that we have here are wireframe blocks and premium blocks. And I'm gonna click on all blocks here. And as you can see, the wireframe blocks are meant for you to be able to drag things over to the canvas just like this so that you can remove all of the colors and background images and you can just focus just on the layout of your website. And the premium design blocks are actual designer blocks. These are blocks that when you pull them over, they actually have images and design so you can pick from different things and just you know pull them over and build a website that way. So the choice is up to you or you could mix and match. I'm gonna delete this in just a minute, but basically I wanna to talk to you about our design philosophy with this. Now Groove Pages is a powerful yet easy to use visual page website and funnel design tool. And it's built with the philosophy of simplicity. We want to deliver a truly visual design experience that lets you create fully functional web pages, funnels, and sites without having to write any code. Now, Groove Pages works on the concept of stacking predefined block sections to build fully coded and hosted web pages incredibly fast and easy. It's actually very natural and intuitive. So, our design philosophy is to allow you to find everything that you need here for your website without having to worry about doing anything other than putting in your headline. Now we have blocks, we have elements, and I'll go over all these things in just a minute. Uh, and then over here, what you get 
when we click on something is the style editor and that's where we can adjust the colors and the background images and borders and spacing and all those different things. Again, our design philosophy is to make sure that you have everything you need pre-made for you here. And then if you wanna to touch them up, you can come into the style editor here. All right, so I'm gonna delete this right here and we're actually gonna build a website and here we go. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna build all the pages in my site. So I'm gonna go over here to pages and I'm gonna click add new page. And again, we're gonna have plenty of web page templates for you. Uh, they're being made uh, right now as we speak, we're focusing on the blocks. And then once we have all the blocks in place, then we can go ahead and actually build pages, funnels, and websites for you. But let's just create a blank page from scratch here. And when we click on these three dots here, we have some choices to edit the settings, set it as a home page, rename it, clone it, delete it, or hide it from the navigation. So I'm gonna show you some of these things, but first let's make all the pages. So I'm gonna rename this, and I'm gonna call this the About Us page. Okay, I'll hit that check mark. Let's add another page. Let's call this the Contact page. Let's create another one. We're gonna call this Media. Let's create another one. We're gonna call this one support. And we're gonna create now a page to give away our ebook. So we're gonna call this one free ebook. And now we need a page for them to download that. So we're gonna call this. Thank you, download. Now we have all the pages of our website that we want. <clears throat> now at any time, I can see what page I'm in by what's highlighted here, or I can just go to the menu and I can change my page here. And all these pages are blank. But I want you to notice here, this says primary navigation. So these are all the navigation links that are gonna show up in my navigation bar. Thing is, I don't want people to actually see my ebook page on the navigation. So I'm gonna put that here on hidden pages, just like that. And I drop that and I have that here. And I also certainly don't want them to see my download link. So I'm going to hide that from the navigation and I'm going to put that here as well. And now I have my download page and my ebook page hidden from the navigation. And very soon what we're going to have up here is another tab that you'll be able to click right here. And that's going to say your funnels. And then you're going to be able to organize your funnel pages and imagine this saying landing page, upsell page, tripwire page, uh, thank you page. And so you'll be able to handle your your navigation pages on your website, the hidden pages that you might not want there, and then you'll click a tab and then you'll have different pages where you can actually collapse and open up uh, different funnels from the different templates that we'll provide you. That's really more of an organizational feature. You can actually just build your funnels right now just by putting them in your hidden pages. All right, now let's put a navigation block up. Now, when I go over to the blocks, I can either choose a navigation block here and just drag it over, or I can choose one from the prototypes. So I'm going to pull a prototype up just like this. I'm going to drag that over there like that. And if you notice, it said first link, second link, third link, fourth link, and fifth link. And it automatically just populated that based on my pages here. Now look at this. If I move my support above the media, it switches it. And if I move it back, <clears throat> it goes just like that. Now, the other thing is I don't want the media uh, on my navigation. I wanted that to be a sub navigation under contact. So how would we do that? Well, we simply just indent this in like that. And now I have the, the media as a drop down under contacts. All right. And we'd have to see that functionality on a, on a page preview. Okay. But that's pretty much how that works to just build a menu. Now, the other thing you're noticing is I have uh, the logo here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over to here. It opens up my style editor. Okay. I'm going to click on functionality. I'm going to click browse and I'm going to look on my hard drive for a logo and I'm just going to pull this group pages logo here and just open that up. We're going to load that into my library here and I'm just going to click select and I'm going to click update and that puts my logo in just like that. Now let's say I want to change the background of this entire section. What I can do is I can go here and just click on background and we're gonna have a full color picker here for you. But right now we have the different shades of the color working like this. We're gonna have a little thing to allow you to put in one of the 16 million colors. But let's assume I wanted to make this uh, a color pink in the background like that. And then I would do the same thing here with this menu section here. I would select 
the uh, menu and then I would change that background as well uh, to pink just like that uh, but I'm gonna click on this undo button here and we could always go back at any time and change things now I want to show you one more thing about these menus the thing is if I want to have an external link right let's say my support I want to go to my help desk and I don't want it to actually go to a page on the website so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this page right here because it's not really a page right it's um, maybe I'm using something like Zendesk and I don't actually need a page for support and now the support page is gone but what if I want to link that to an external page and not necessarily a page that's on this website well what we do is we go to this menu right here and then I go to functionality and what I can do is I can add an external link and how many external links do I want well if I put two then I get these examples here like this but I'm gonna I just want one external link at this time and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my help desk link in here and I'm gonna name it support and I'm gonna tell that to open in a new window then I click update and just like that I now have an external link that'll now go to my help desk where these actually go to pages within the website and again this goes to an external page okay I'm gonna open up the style editor and just let you know two things that will happen on every style editor you will see here ways to change uh, the text the background the border spacing sizing the shadow and any custom CSS if you had a super web designer that wanted to do some ninja stuff and anything that needs functionality like a pop-up or that menu or a countdown timer or a carousel it will then have a functionality tab most things won't most things will only be design uh, some things will have functionality if you need to add a link to it or upload an image or this is dynamic based on the particular thing that you choose if it was a countdown timer which we're going to display you will get things that'll say pick a date and things like that so let's close that and move on okay so now I'm going to start building the website and again remember we use blocks to just build the website now I have all of these different types of wireframe blocks which again wireframes take all of the design out of it and let us just focus on the layout and if I want I can use the premium design blocks right now we have um, about 75 of them and in about a couple of weeks there will be a couple of hundred and then we already have about a thousand on back order and so you can expect you know over a year just in terms of blocks we may have over uh, 2,000 different blocks uh, that are featured with tags and different ways to organize them and things like that but right now let's go and let's see I might want to put uh, an alert bar up at the top right you know with a little countdown timer so I'm just gonna drag that right above here like that and just like that we get our alert bar so I'm gonna choose a cover section here and I'm gonna choose this one right here I kind of like the way this one looks and I'm gonna drag it here now if at any time I feel that I put something in the wrong place or I want to see how it looks in a different place I can just grab the drag handle and if I want to put it back I just drag it back into position just like that so next thing is I like to always put a footer in so let's take a look I have my wireframe footers and these are all alphabetical so I can look at a footer like this that I can just add any color to it that I want by dragging it down here like that and now I have a footer here or if I like again I can use one of these premium design footers and I could drag something over like that either one of those all right I'm gonna delete this one here I kind of like this colorful one here let's continue to build the site out with some of these blocks let's uh, add a call to action uh, I'll do something like here with a prototype block let's add another one the opposite way like that let's add some features put something like that just there like that let's add some testimonials okay I kind of like this one here and this is what I would call a hero testimonial I'll put that one right here just like that okay let's go back to the wireframes let's add some things like a contact us form I'm going to show you how cool the Google map section of this is we're gonna just put a map section and we could order these things around later remember I told you all we have to do is just grab these drag handles we can position these things anywhere we like but for right now we're just gonna start putting the stacks uh, let's put in a pricing form down here towards the bottom uh, let's do one of these triple section pricing forms I like something 
just like that. And let's put in a countdown timer. So uh, I kind of like this one here with the round uh, section. So we'll just drop that in. Let's also put in a form over here and I'm going to put in this one right here, just like that. And finally, we'll put in a team like, you know, who who's responsible for this in the company and you know, who built it and those types of things. Basically, what we've done here is we've stacked all of the different blocks so that we can start designing the sites and adding colors and different things like that. There's a couple of more things that we can do here. Uh, let me show you how we can now click on this block here and I can click on functionality and I can put in an address. And that's my old address in San Diego. And you'll see just like that, a map comes up with San Diego, just like that. Now that might be good if you want to put your map address in for your company or anything like that. Okay, let's move on. If I want to change the color of a section, I have a couple of different ways that I can do that. Number one, I can just take one of these prototype blocks here and I can change the background section to match something like we have uh, you know, over here. Or we can just change that section completely uh, to maybe be like white, okay? And the same thing here, this section uh, here, uh, I can go here and I can see that it already has a background color, but if I wanted to change it to a dark shade of red, I would do something just like that. Now, the next thing I wanna go over is what happens when you see with a lot of different editors out there, a lot of different softwares, you're always getting these, these grab handles, you're fighting with them. Well, don't worry. With ours, you simply click right here and then it'll tell you where you are in what's known as the dome tree. And if it's not the one you want, you can just hit the up button and it tells you the current one that you're in. We're in the container. And if we want to move up to this one, I can either click on it or just move up. And now it now shows me the parent frame to that. And I click that and now I'm in that frame. And if I want to work on this one, any of the stylings I can do here, like again, change the background. This is going to look weird, but if I wanted to just change the background of this, I could do that. Certainly, I don't want to do that. Um, and if I want to move up from this one, I just go like this, and now I'm in the, the very top section, just like that. So that's one of the things that you don't get with a lot of other softwares are these, you get these grab handles that you're always fighting with with your cursor. With ours, you just click in. If it's not the one you want, you can just move up through the dome tree, just like that. Okay, now I know I'm not building the most gorgeous site. I'm just picking random colors, but let's talk about changing the photograph here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and I'm, I know I'm in the right element. It says image. So I'm going to click on functionality and I'm going to click browse. And now I already have a picture of myself here. So I'm just going to click on this one and click select and I'm going to click update. And just like that, we see my picture here. Now, if I wanted to change this one here, I would uh, just pick on uh, this one here, just like that, click on functionality. I have a second picture of myself here that I preloaded for this demo. I click select and update. And just like that, we have our, our picture loaded. Okay. Now let's talk about text. And when I see the text icon that opens up this text editor for me, just like this, and I can start typing just like that. And again, we can do that anywhere we see text. We click on the text icon. I type in hello world just like that and we're all set. I can take this text and I can change the color. If I wanna make this uh, like a, a gray color, I would just choose one of these grays just like that or send it back to white. Obviously we can make it any color, but you know we wanna make it as pretty as possible. We can control the font size uh, here. Uh, also, we can also control it uh, here as well. And we have you know, ways to hyperlink it and center the text and change the alignment to the left or to center, all those different things. Pretty self-explanatory. And you'll have the ability to choose you know, any different color you want and choose from you know, all of the hundreds of different Google fonts uh, that you want as well. Again, what I'm doing is I'm just showing you the features rather than building a consistent site with colors. So you're starting to see the colors mix and match because it's a demo, but I think you get the point. Okay, a couple of other things I want to let you know. When you click on these different things here, uh, you'll notice that you get a section here that says clone. And just like that, we've cloned that section. If I want to do that again, I just click clone and we're building it more and more. If I want to get rid of those sections, I hit the trash can and those sections go. We can clone pretty much anything that we see. Uh, we, can con we can clone an entire block section just like this and click clone. And now I've got a second one and I can go ahead and just delete that. Let me show you some other cool things that we can do with background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this hero section right here. 
and I'm going to uh, create one from a prototype. So I'm going to go to the covers over here and I'm going to choose just this one right here just for this example. Now I don't like this gray background. I can certainly go here and I can change the background and you know maybe make it a darker shade of gray like this and then start adjusting the fonts or I can just say no color at all. Okay just like this and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a background instead and I'm going to go here into the free stock photos. We have thousands of royalty free images uh, that you can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a house. All right, and let's choose uh, this one right here. And that's uploading. And once it's in my library, I click select. Okay, and then what I want to do, I'm just going to set that to be the cover photo. And just like that, we have a background. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, let me show you how the countdown timer works. I'm going to scroll down to the countdown timer section. Again, if I wanted that background of this entire section to maybe be, let's say, like a dark, uh, a, a light blue, I would click on my blues here. I choose a very light blue and I've got that. And I can go into these different things and I can change their colors as well. But let's focus on the functionality. Now, as you can see here, I'm clicking on th these individual countdown timers and I'm not getting the functionality. So what we want to do is we want to click until it circles the entire countdown section. Now we have functionality here. You see we're in the countdown uh, section and now I can set a countdown timer. We have a couple of different choices for our countdown timers in a daily a landing. I'm not going to go over all of that right now. We'll just leave a fixed and we're going to set that to go off on December 8th somewhere around noon and I've set my timer to noon. I could say what time zone I want and what happens when the countdown down timer is done and I click update and just like that you can actually see I'm seeing a live preview of that happen right now. Now the next thing I want to show you here is I'm good I haven't even clicked save once all right when I click over here and I look at revisions basically you can see it's basically saving every single time that I make a change to the website it's saving and this goes back you know hundreds of different saves and at any time I can preview and see what that looked like and it's pulling back that previous version for us I'm gonna click cancel uh, but as you can see we can bring back any version that we wanted at any time so I'm gonna save this here and this is where you can publish your site you can use custom domains and things like that as well now I want to show you some cool features that we can do I'm gonna go down to this section where I dragged an iPhone earlier <clears throat> And I'm going to put an image into this iPhone. So I'm going to click on functionality. It's a light iPhone. I'm actually going to choose a dark one and I'm going to choose an image here. Let's choose this one here of this car. And we'll just click select and we'll click update. And just like that, we've added the, the car into the iPhone. If I don't like that one, I click remove and maybe I put this little kitten here. It's centered a little bit more uh, and we'll probably get a better uh, view just like that. All right, that's pretty cool. Let me show you a couple of other things that we can do. These were all blocks. I never went into these uh, elements here. So let me click on these elements. And let's say I wanted to start with uh, an empty section. So I'll pick a block out here. <clears throat> I'm going to pick an uh, I'm going to pick an empty one. I'm going to choose one. I'm going to choose one here with let's say three columns, and I'm just going to drag that in. Okay. All right, and here are my three columns. And now I can go into these components and I can put different things in here. I can put a paragraph into that one. Um, I can put a YouTube video into this one here. And I can put a laptop or a desktop computer. Let's try a laptop and I'll put that into here. Now I'm gonna go to YouTube and get a video. I'll be right back. Okay, I got a video from YouTube and I just click here. Again, I can go to functionality and I'm gonna put the ID of the YouTube video, I click update and I've got a video there. Now remember, I can drag this video and I can put it anywhere that I want. And if I wanna make this a little bit bigger now, I just click on sizing and click on relative to parent. And I just make that as big as I want, just like that. Let's delete this for now. We don't necessarily need that there. And let's just give another example of something that we can put in here. I'm gonna put in some custom embed code. So if you've got any custom embed code that you wanna put in, you just go here, you click on the settings, and then you can paste your code in here. You hit save and the custom embed code would go there. All right, let's delete that form, this section here. 
Okay, let me show you something else we can do. I'm going to start with an empty block and I'm now going to go into the elements and I have things here like a tab section that I can do. We also have something called a collapse and that's where you can basically just keep adding as many of these collapses as you want and you're building like an FAQ. Let's just uh, get rid of this and give you one last example of something we can do. I can go into an empty block, drag in uh, an empty block, we'll put it right there. And then I can go into my elements. This is one of my favorite things. I can now <clears throat> build <clears throat> a carousel. I'm gonna drag that in here just like that. Okay, and when I click on that, I can then say I want this carousel to loop. Uh, I want it to autoplay and a thousand milliseconds a second. So let's just say every 1.5 seconds, I want it to go through five different slides. And now, let's, just for this demo, let me just do three so I don't have to load too many images. And we'll start with the dog. And then we'll start with the cat. Okay, and then we're going to start with the family. And just like that, I hit update. And now I have a carousel that automatically slides every uh, 1500 milliseconds. Isn't that pretty cool? And we have the little arrows over here that can go back and forth and, and so on and so forth. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. There's a lot of different things that we can, we can do with these, adding these custom components in there. We're going to be adding a lot more different custom components uh, as well. Uh, but again, the blocks are basically different sections. So you'll notice, I'm going to get rid of this so it doesn't keep distract, distracting us. As you'll notice, we have countdown timer sections that are pre-designed for us. But if I just want to put a countdown timer, not a section, just a countdown timer maybe right below this team, well, then I would go into the elements and I would look for the countdown. Here it is. And I would just drag that and I would just put that right here just like that. And I have it right above our team just like that. And then I could style it and make it round and all those different things. Okay, let me show you something else here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this button right here and I'm going to change this button uh, to maybe like a black button like this with yellow text. So I go to the text section and I make the text yellow. And just like that, I've changed that. Or maybe I want this to be a yellow button with black text, right? The famous Belcher button. Well, just like that, I now have a button. Now, if I don't want to keep making this button over and over and over again, what I do is I go to the global styles and I'm going to create a new style and I'm going to call it yellow button. Okay, and I'm going to save it. And now if I go to any other button on the page, I can just select that button, click on global styles and just click that yellow button and it'll turn that button that same color. And I can just do that over and over to all these different buttons and I don't have to keep styling them. Now, a couple more things. If I created a site template that I liked when I'm done, I could go up here and I could save this as a template to reuse it again. We're gonna have a feature here where you'll be able to put a little heart here and it'll save any block section. So like, let's say you, you design your footer and you have all your different links in here and you don't wanna constantly be using that footer over and over and over again throughout the years. Well, then what you simply do is you'll hit the heart and then you can save that and then you'll go into your block sections and you'll see my favorites and you can just drag those in to your other pages so you don't have to keep designing them over and over again. Okay, now if you have a designer and he or she wants to do any ninja things, then at any time they can just go into the style editor and click on custom attributes and they can basically say how they want it to display. They could give it a name and a class and then drop the custom CSS in here and they can basically do anything that can be done on a web page if they want to do some ninja things. Also, if you want to see any of the code for any one of the blocks, you just click here and you can see the code for any particular block that you have here. So this is the code here for the footer. We just go down to the bottom. I click here and we get all of the code for that particular block. If I want the one for this one, I just click right here. And if I want to see the code for the entire site, I just go here and I can inject any code that I want. And furthermore, we're going to be adding something where when you click on any single element, you're going to see the little code. So if you just want to go down to the actual button uh, that you see uh, here like this, you'll be able to just see a little bracket like you see right here. And you'll be able to see a little box that'll open up and it'll give you the code just for that particular element. That again is for designers that want to be able to see every little 
uh, last bit of code and maybe work on it and do some custom styling. Something I would never do and I would probably suggest you wouldn't either. But your designer may be happy to know that they could do that for you. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is the pop-ups. And so to create pop-ups, you just click create a pop-up. And we have three types of pop-ups. We have a standard pop-up, which is something that you would link to a button. We have an entry pop-up, which means it pop-ups when they show up at the site, and an exit pop-up, which happens when they leave the site. So we're going to create two pop-ups. We're just going to call this one a button, uh, and that's a standard, all right? And we can choose what page this works on. I'm just going to choose the home page for now. And let's choose, we'll just choose this one here. All right, so now we've got a pop-up, and I can change the text and all that, but I'm just going to click Save and Exit. And then we're going to come here and we're going to create another pop-up. We're going to call this, you know, an exit pop-up. And I'm going to choose an exit off the home page. And I want it to show uh, on every visit. Okay. And I like this one down here with the countdown timer. So we could go and we could set, you know, the timer uh, for this here, but, you know, by changing the functionality. But for right now, I'm just going to click save and exit. And now I have two different pop-ups. So if I take a button and let's take this button right here, okay, and I go to functionality and I put some text in here like download and I link that to the pop-up that we called button, I click update and now that will open up that pop-up. And so I'm going to save this and we're going to click the preview icon right here and we'll notice that two things are going to happen. One, when I go to exit the site, we get this pop-up, okay? And number two, when I click on this download button, we get that pop-up. So we can close this preview. Let me show you one last little thing here. If I take this button like this, and I go and I make this a dark black like this with yellow text, once that's done, I can now go to the global styles and I could call this black yellow like that. Now that I go over to here, I could take this button and go to my, my styles and I could take, take this black yellow and just like that, uh, I can take any button that I have on the page and I can just click black yellow and just like that, I can, I don't have to, you know, continually style it. So there's so many more features like that that I can show you. We can apply styles. If I want a particular style only to be shown on a desktop or a laptop or a mobile device or or uh, anything like that, we, we can do that. Again, this is how you preview how your site is going to look on a mobile device. And this is how you preview on an iPad, a laptop, and on a full screen desktop. There's a lot you know that we can show you. Uh, coming soon, we're going to have things like uh, background transparencies where you can put like a color over overlay over an image. Uh, we're going to have row and column grabs so that we can stretch these rows just by grabbing the handles. Tons of integrations. You'll be able to, like I said before, adding favorites to your blocks. Um, and of course, tons of designer blocks. We're never going to stop. Uh, you'll end up having templates, funnels, split testing, uh, blogs, so much more. And that pretty much goes over everything, you know, all the functionality that's important right now for you. Now, it's very clear that what I did, this is a demo literally to basically show you the different functions, how we did the map, how we can put different pictures in there. Uh, but certainly, we, we, we got to add the TLC. We've, you know, I've made this color red, another color blue, uh, and I'm, you know, not stacking anything in any particular order because I wanted to show you how to do individual styling how to do countdown timers, how to build a menu. I didn't actually build a site for any particular look. I wanted to show you how you could change the background image, change the buttons, uh, different things like that. So that wraps up the demo right there. Again, I just wanted to really confirm that this demo was to go over how to do the styling for an individual element, a font, a button, a color, a pop-up. It wasn't necessarily to build a website for design. I didn't have in mind particular colors or images or anything like that. Uh, so that wraps up this demo. I hope you like it. And that's the Groove Pages beta. I'm Mike Fulsane, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.